One summer day, 125,000 years ago, during the height of a warm, interglacial period, a young Neanderthal woman walked along a warm eastern Mediterranean shoreline. Her body, naturally hairless except for her wild mane of dark hair cascading down her back, gleams in the warm sunlight. Her skin, smooth and bronzed, showcases the contours of her muscular frame, built for survival in the rugged landscape around her. She carries a long, sharpened spear in one hand, gripping it with practiced ease, a tool of survival that mirrors her connection to the wild world around her, and around her neck she wears a bear claw necklace. Her shoulders are strong and square, capable of wielding the spear with precision as she looks ahead, her dark eyes scanning the horizon. The muscles in her arms and legs ripple with each step, showcasing her strength and resilience, honed through a life of wilderness survival. Her feet leave imprints in the wet sand, quickly filled by the retreating waves as she moves confidently through her ancient world, connected to the earth and sea in a way that is both timeless and primitive. She moves with the confident stride of a huntress, at home in this ancient world where confidence and strength are the only thing that matter. Marine shells discovered in the Skull and Kafze caves of the eastern Mediterranean have been interpreted as some of the earliest evidence of symbolic behavior, particularly in the form of personal adornment, such as necklaces. These findings indicate that early Homo sapiens populations in the eastern Mediterranean engaged in complex social and cultural practices during the Middle Paleolithic. The Skull and Kafze Caves are two of the most important Middle Paleolithic archaeological sites for studying the early interaction of Homo sapiens and Neanderthals. These caves, located in the Mount Carmel and Lower Galilee regions, have yielded critical fossil evidence of anatomically modern humans dating back between 120,000 and 80,000 years ago, roughly coinciding with the Eemian period. Archaeologists discovered several marine shells in Kafze Cave that appeared to have been collected and modified. These shells, such as bittersweet clams, known scientifically as glycymeris, were discovered alongside burials, implying that they were used as personal ornaments, possibly strung together to form a necklace or other forms of body decoration. The marine shells discovered in Skull and Kafze Caves provide some of the earliest evidence for symbolic behavior in early humans, indicating that these populations practiced personal ornamentation possibly to express identity, status, or group affiliation. The collection and modification of these shells, as well as their use in burial contexts, demonstrate these early humans' cognitive sophistication and connection to the Mediterranean's beaches. During the Eemian period, Neanderthals inhabited several significant cave sites in the eastern Mediterranean, including Krapina, Tabun, Kebara, Amud, and Zutia caves. The overlap of Neanderthal and Homo sapiens populations in the region suggests that the two species may have interacted, though the extent of such interaction is still being investigated. Both Neanderthals and Homo sapiens benefited from the region's rich and diverse ecosystems, which included both coastal and inland areas. The wealth of fossil and archaeological evidence from the Krapina site in Croatia offers insights into the social and cultural practices of Neanderthals during the Eemian. Although debated, there is some evidence to suggest that Neanderthals at Krapina may have engaged in intentional burial of their dead. Several individuals were found in positions that suggest some form of funerary treatment, although the evidence is not conclusive. There is also a necklace made of eagle talons, suggesting a complex Neanderthal culture. However, all was not a Garden of Eden during this time. According to the discoverer of the Krapina site, Neanderthals evidently did not coexist peacefully with their neighbors, because Neanderthal man was apparently a cannibal, judging by the fragments of charred skull and extremities. It is difficult to imagine early man from Krapina enjoying the wealth of his hunt in peace and undisturbed. No doubt he was attacked on his territory from time to time by neighbouring hordes who may not have had such abundant hunting grounds. Neanderthals fell on each side, and the victors proceeded with the dead as they did with the catch from a good hunt, he wrote. 
The Crepina Three Skull is theorized to be of a young Neanderthal woman due to the very gracile appearance of the partial cranium. However, cut marks on the skull are not consistent with scalping, cannibalism, defleshing, or other perimortem activities described for Neanderthals. These marks represent a type of funereal behavior yet to be documented in Neanderthals and suggest a kind of ritual treatment of the deceased. The Crepina site provides an invaluable window into Neanderthal life during the Eemian period. The warm, forested environment of this period allowed Neanderthals to exploit a variety of resources, including large herbivores and plant foods. The rich fossil and cultural evidence from Crepina reveals that Neanderthals were highly adaptable, technologically sophisticated, and socially complex. There is also a possibility that their Neanderthal interacted with early modern humans who had moved into the Levant during this time. The warm environment of the Eemian period created ecological conditions that may have facilitated the movement and interaction of various hominin species in the eastern Mediterranean, particularly Homo sapiens and Neanderthals. Both species exploited coastal resources, and anthropologists are particularly interested in the possibility of contact, exchange, or competition during this time period. And Africa and Eurasia are not really separated by, by barriers that mean anything very important to a species like ours over periods of even dozens or hundreds or thousands of years. So the idea that, that being in Eurasia or Africa is such a profound barrier that you would not expect people to move from one region to the other in periods of tens of thousands of years or hundreds of thousands of years, that's, that's a strange idea. Mm -hmm. Skull Cave has yielded the remains of at least 10 individuals, many of whom exhibit a combination of both archaic and modern characteristics. The skull fossils date from 100,000 to 120,000 years ago, which corresponds to the Eemian period. In Kafsa Cave, archaeologists have discovered fossil remains from over 20 people, including complete skeletons. The fossils here date from 90,000 to 120,000 years ago, and they overlap slightly with those found at the school site. However, Kafse Cave's fossil remains are more modern-looking than those from School Cave. Some fossils, such as School 5, exhibit a combination of modern and archaic characteristics, prompting some researchers to speculate that these individuals were the result of interbreeding between Neanderthals and early Homo sapiens. School 5, for example, has a robust Neanderthal-like brow ridge and a more modern, rounded skull shape. The Eemian period, characterized by high sea levels and warm temperatures, had a significant impact on the eastern Mediterranean landscapes. During this time, the region was covered in lush vegetation and home to a diverse range of flora and fauna, including large herbivores like gazelles, deer and aurochs, as well as predators like lions and leopard. This abundance of resources would have made the eastern Mediterranean an appealing location for both Homo sapiens and Neanderthals, providing ample opportunities for hunting and gathering. One of the eastern Mediterranean's distinguishing features during the Eemian period was its extensive coastal zones, which provided access to a wide range of marine resources. Rising sea levels have expanded coastal areas, opening up new opportunities to exploit marine life such as fish, shellfish and mollusks. These coastal resources were critical in sustaining both Homo sapiens and Neanderthals in the area. Volcanic activity during the Eemian period had a significant natural impact on the environment, but it did not have the same widespread cooling effects as volcanic eruptions during glacial periods. The Eemian period was distinguished by relatively stable and warm environment conditions, but there were still instances of volcanic eruptions that could have harmed local environments, particularly in Europe and other volcanic regions. Neanderthals and other human populations living during the Eemian period would have had to adapt to any environmental changes brought about by volcanic eruptions. These populations frequently sought refuge in caves, which may have protected them from the immediate effects of eruptions. Furthermore, Volcanic eruptions may have changed the availability of resources such as food and water, forcing human populations to migrate or adapt their survival strategies. Nonetheless, while the Eemian interglacial was relatively warm and stable, volcanic activity continued, particularly in geologically active areas such as Italy. This activity most likely caused localized environmental disruptions. 
but these events had little effect on the Emians' overall warm environment. The favourable environment and proximity of the Mediterranean coast to the school and Kafsa caves indicate that coastal resources played an important role in the survival and subsistence strategies of both Homo sapiens and Neanderthals in the area. It also likely provided opportunities for hominin groups to enter and exit the region, increasing the likelihood of interaction between these two species. While there is no direct fossil evidence of Neanderthals at school and Kafsa, the presence of Mousterian tool assemblages, a technology traditionally associated with Neanderthals alongside the remains of anatomically modern Homo sapiens, suggests a complex scenario of cultural exchange or convergence in tool-making practices. This raises concerns about possible interactions between Homo sapiens and Neanderthals, especially during the Eemian period, when both species were likely present in the eastern Mediterranean. School and Kafse Caves' proximity to the Mediterranean coast most likely influenced the subsistence strategies of the Homo sapiens populations that lived there. Coastal environments provide a wealth of resources, and both archaeological and ethno-archaeological evidence indicate that coastal foraging was an important component of hominin subsistence strategies. During the Eemian period, the Mediterranean coast provided access to a variety of marine resources such as fish, shellfish and sea mammals. Evidence from other coastal sites indicates that early Homo sapiens and Neanderthals used marine resources, and it is likely that the populations at School and Kafsa did as well. The availability of marine and terrestrial resources in the eastern Mediterranean may have resulted in seasonal movements between the coast and inland areas. Coastal plains would have been resource-rich at certain times of the year, while inland areas offered opportunities for large game hunting. This mobility may have increased the likelihood of interaction between various hominin groups as they moved across the landscape. The coastal areas of the eastern Mediterranean, with their abundant marine resources, could have served as a refuge during these colder months, attracting both species and increasing the likelihood of interaction. If Homo sapiens and Neanderthals coexisted in the eastern Mediterranean during the Eemian, competition for resources along the Mediterranean coast may have influenced their interactions. While the region's ecological diversity would have provided plenty of resources for both species, environment stress may have increased competition for key resources like fresh water, hunting grounds and coastal foraging areas. The evidence from the Krapina School and Kafse Caves combined with the ecological conditions of the Eemian period, suggests that Homo sapiens and Neanderthals coexisted in the eastern Mediterranean, taking advantage of the region's abundant coastal resources. And with that tantalizing statement, we leave you to ponder the mysteries of our shared human history. And before you go, please share, comment, and check out the other videos on our channel. Thank you, and take care.